Like yeah, Garif- yeah, Garifuna. That's what I said. <laughs> I said something now. <laughs> it sounded like something else, so I had to correct you. Hold <laughs> up. Wait, Garifuna. Got wait, it. Because Garifuna is my culture. I can I gotta make sure that we present it right. Totally, please. Yeah, okay. correct me if I'm wrong. I, yes, please okay. correct. Me. Okay. okay, we do it again. I can do it again. I do it again. Right. Got it. What's up, y'all? This is Jermaine Williams, aka Much Mouth, aka Pork Chop Extra Gravy. Want to give a shout out to the Griffina International Indigenous Film Festival. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. This video was sponsored by the Garifuna International Indigenous Film Festival, a 501c3 nonprofit organization that focuses on the preservation of indigenous cultures from around the world. Very, very, very interesting. Um, yeah. Well, <clears throat> proud black man to be in America for one. Um, to be honest with you, I'm having a joy being a black father, especially in these times, uh, knowing what our country is kind of going through. Um, I have a five-year-old son and a 10-year-old daughter, and they just absorb a lot, you know, uh, whether it be watching TV or even when they read books or just being in their environment when they are going to school. They recognize the uh, different shades, colors, and different ethnicities. And they have questions, you know, and I'm way more more than proud and, and, and um, active with answering those questions the best way I possibly can. And um, my daughter being 10, very smart, you know, um, I wanted to show and will continue to show <clears throat> different things that's diverse. And when it comes to uh, racial inequality, equality and like injustices, I let my children know early because I hate to find out late. Um, I would hate for them to find out late. Um, just to, for them to just kind of just be in the know of what's in store for them in the future and what's to come. You know, you just never know what, what's to come. And at least they can say that, you know, their father taught them that, you know, and they're not leery or weird about it, you know. Um, so, yeah, just being a black father, is, it's an amazing thing <clears throat> to know that your children at such a young age already kind of embrace their skin color, their background, and uh, their greatness. You know, I always tell my daughter she's black girl magic, and I always tell my son he's little back black boy joy. And so I always, always embody that, and I, I let that uh, be known. I'm a very affectionate father, too. Um, this is something as a parent you should do um, with your children, especially as a, with this stigma of being black fathers. I hate it that's in America that they feel like black fathers aren't in their kids' lives, um, and we're not. In, in encouraging them we're not a deep part in their lives you know we always get the uh how good the black mama is what she is you know but we we should always push the narrative of how great black fathers are and i feel like a great black father I'm not perfect by any means but i do my very best to instill knowledge into my kids about their background and where they come from um, being a black husband, same narrative. You know, they say that black men are prone to being with women outside their race, which I don't think is true. 
Uh, if you look at the numbers, majority of black men are married and are with black women. But the other narrative always being pushed, which I feel sucks, you know, but there's nothing better than black love. Um, me and my wife have had our struggles. I mean, our struggles, but that's marriage. And uh, being in a marriage, it isn't easy. You know, love hurts. Love is good too. It's all at the same time. When it comes to love, you'll get hurt. <clears throat> and it can feel like the most beautiful thing you've ever felt. You know, and uh, marriage comes with fighting. You have to fight every single day. And I'm not just not talking about arguing and bickering and being physical or anything like that. You're fighting to keep the person that you said, yes, I do to, you know? So I'm enjoying being a husband and, and a father in that all regard and being black shit. I'm on top of the world. <laughs> How do you prepare your family for projects that require you to be away for an extended period? Hmm. Um, since I've had my kids, I haven't had to be gone for too long. I want to say there was one project I did, <clears throat> excuse me, called The Boys of Abu Ghraib. It was basically a war movie um, that I did some years back. I want to say about six, seven years ago. Um, so my daughter was about three or four. I had to leave for maybe three to four weeks, you know? So at such a young age, I don't even think she remembers me leaving, but I do try to let them know I'll be safe and I will always, always be in communication every single day, um, the best way I possibly can. Um, I went away a few times when earlier in me and my wife's career, <clears throat> but um, I mean, I just let her know and she kind of respected the fact that I had to leave and um, she, she, she cheered me on. You know, she was my cheerleader for sure and just uh, pushed me to put my best foot forward for the role. You know, just waited me to come home. I remember doing uh, Stump the Yard. I for sure remember doing Stump the Yard. That was like a three-month stint of just filming. And even with um, um, great debaters, there was like a week or so, maybe two weeks, where um, I was able to come back for a week and chill because that week that was being filmed, it wasn't a lot of coverage on me. So I was able to kind of go back, come back and visit my family and friends. So, you know, you can work things out. When, it, when you're out and about or doing your thing on, on set, they'll give you some time to kind of relieve yourself and go back home if you need to, especially if it's not a strenuous, hard work week for you, so. This can either be personal or career. Time when I was most disappointed. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, now uh, this is probably have to do with my career. Um, I remember auditioning for Red Tails. Uh, Red Tails, <clears throat> if anybody never saw it, it's basically about, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, flying troop of the T Tuskegee Airmen back in the uh, World War War. And um, these black airmen were crazy good at what they did. Uh, when they were literally um, basically ridiculed for not being good enough or smart enough to be fighter pilots uh, against the Germans. But they definitely proved, like we always do as black men, we always prove people wrong. Um, they made a big voice, they had a big voice and a big part of the war war in the skies. But uh, they did a movie about it. Uh, George Lucas was pretty much producer of it um, called Red Tail. Uh, everybody was in it. Neo, uh, Nate Parker, uh, Terrence Howard, Cuba Gooden Jr. And it was a role in there that I really, really, really wanted. And at the time, the director um, basically told me that I needed to lose some weight for the role. So I was like, no problem. Uh, he said, basically, if you lose the weight, we'll definitely consider you. <clears throat> so I was like, all right, for sure. I went in there and killed the audition. Uh, for the next four weeks, I put myself through a strenuous diet. Um, 
losing close to like 30 pounds or whatever. So when they had asked me to come back, um, <laughs> I'm guessing they still didn't like what they saw and they uh, casted the role to somebody else. And I beat myself really, beat myself up really hard about it, you know, thinking I was like close to 30 pounds in a month ain't an easy task, you know. So for you to accomplish that, accomplish that your mindset is like, yo, I'm going in, I'm going hard, I'm about to get this role. And to go back into the casting room, and I don't know. It kind of, kind of, they still kind of felt like it left the door open to cast me, and they didn't, you know. And uh, I mean, I guess a good thing about it, I lost 30 pounds, but <laughs> the main goal was to try to get that role, and I wasn't able to get it. And I, I really beat myself up, and I was down about that for quite some time. But that's how the business goes, man. And I mean, I know, I know about that rejection you have to definitely have tough skin in this business and you're going to hear the word no or you won't hear no or anything at all you won't get a call you just won't know and you just know you don't have the role when they don't give you the contract to sign so you know that bring up um, an insecurity for you you know the fact that they spoke on your weight and things like that and telling you to uh not at all. Not at all. Thing is, I know myself. You know yourself. You know, I've always been chubby growing up, chubby as an adult. And when you know yourself, uh, you're comfortable with it. You know, I was just, I was, I was more so upset that I worked so hard. I didn't know exactly what else they wanted from me. You know, so I worked my ass off. And still didn't get the role. At the end of the day, there's so many personalities and so many people involved in these choices that sometimes it just doesn't go your way. It really doesn't. You know, you can have two or three people that say, yes, they want you. This is the guy we want for this role. And it takes one guy who's probably above them to say, no, I don't like him. And they'll go with his decision, his or her decision. And it just happens like that. You know, so like again, rejection is a big part of this game in the acting world. I want to say in the industry in, in general, you could be a writer, you could be a director, uh, director of photography. At the end of the day, you're going to hear no until you get to where you want to be. You know, so it is what it is. It never gave me insecurity or doubted my craft. I'm good at what I do. Stand by what I do. You know, and I've been able to be blessed to have worked on some great projects, you know. Nice. I'm, I'm so glad that you own, you own that, you know. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have a hard time dealing with acceptance, you know. So it's like it can be a, a lifelong thing where they're just constantly beating themselves up and they never move forward. They never get anywhere. Because, Absolutely. Uh, you know, they stay in the Absolutely. Past in that yeah, moment for sure you know and have conversations with you and actually you know get to know you and things like that it's like how what's your take on that how do you how do you see manifestation you know in your in your life how does it form for you you know it's crazy man i i, I really i started this business as a young kid 12 years old one of my main goals was to try to just make people smile and make people laugh. I just love doing that, you know, cracking jokes in school and class and, you know, being inspired. I think everybody has a story about who they were inspired by. Me personally, um, my inspiration were Eddie Murphy, Martin Lawrence, Will Smith. I haven't worked with them yet, but I still have um, a lot of hope that I will work with him, whether it be me writing something or me working with him in front of the camera. I pray for that and I want for that to happen. These are people I looked up to and the people that gave me um, the skills that I have just by being inspired by them. You know what I mean? I looked at them and said, I want to do that. <clears throat> so, And I had a great 
push from family and a, and a great support system that told me to do the same thing. And I did that. What I'm saying is just like how they inspired me. <clears throat> I've inspired so many, whether it be you or somebody else, this and that, it always connects to something, you know? So the fact that, you know, you started stepping at two and you saw, you know, the front person in line to see stump the yard and then, you then move forward to teach people in class about step. There's always some type of connection there. You know, just recently, I was able to help somebody find a um, commercial agent through my agency. And this particular guy was a fan of mine, you know. Now, lucky enough, he'd already kind of prepared himself prior. Um, he had headshots, he had uh, a reel for him, and he was able to call my agency call the commercial department and, and say, hey, I'm interested. I got a referral from Jermaine Williams. And then just a few weeks later, he's now represented by my agency. I, you know, I, you know it, all, it all connects, you know. And at the same time, I'm humble about mine. And um, even if I help or hook somebody up, I'm never looking for anything in return. You know, people aspire to be things. <clears throat> and I never look at it as being as being in like a handout. I'm doing it from the genuine of my heart because you have a place to go and you have to start from somewhere. It's like I had to start from somewhere. So any kind of way I can help, be an influence, uh, be a, a connection to somebody else, it's manifest, it, it manifests. And it, it, I think it'll definitely come back full circle. You know, you just gotta learn. I think people just have to learn how to Genuine, genuinely pay it forward to somebody else and God will definitely see the blessing in that you know I am a Christian by the way I do believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins and everybody else's sins you know and I try to live my best way Christ like it's not easy but <laughs> I do my best you know and I just I genuinely love helping people <laughs>